Hey, and welcome to another episode of Course Correction here on Between Us Girls with me, your host, Michelle. How y'all doing today? I hope everybody is doing really well. So today I do have a repeat guest with me. Um, the new Miss Lovely Black is coming back to sit with us to share a lot about um, the Mercury retrograde that we are experiencing right now. I know personally I've had a lot of issues with technology and communication since she and I even recorded this episode. So just take a listen. Um, she's going to be teaching us a lot about that. And then also we're going to talk a lot about our shadow work and, you know, how we're kind of growing and becoming new versions of ourselves. Um, don't forget that we do have the last chance holiday market and ladies take the stage coming up with queen and podcast and the between us girls, the podcast reunion show that's happening on December the 21st here in Houston, Texas. So if you are local, you should buy a ticket and you should definitely come out and see us. Otherwise keep listening. So let's just begin by, um, welcoming you back and why don't you just tell us what you've been up to since we talked last time. Oh man, you know, my life is a roller coaster and you never know what I'm going to be doing, when I'm going to be doing it and who I'm going to be doing it with. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, but the last time I talked to you, I was in Florida and um, God, I was in Florida and I was having the worst time with my baby daddy and I was in a different head space and yeah, it was kind of crazy the last time I talked to you. Um, but now I'm back in Georgia. I'm back home. Happy. <laughs> Happy that I'm back home. And, um, you know, life has just been good. It's um, a, continue, a continued growth process. And I just make the best of it, you know, ascending spiritually and uh, being, you know, the best mother that I can be. And, uh trying to lead the world in a better place. Um, I started back modeling. So before, you know, I was just, you know, into the adult movies and now I'm doing the modeling and so far so good. Um, working on a couple of print ads and still doing my uh, interviews. I was just on TV uh, a couple okay. weeks ago. So, you know, just working. Yes, the glow up. Okay, I see you. And I see your pictures. I love that alter ego shot. Thank you. Um, I thought about that when, you know, everyone has an alter ego. And a lot of times we don't embrace it. So who we are at home is not the same person. Generally, we are online. And, you know, when we step outside of our home, we're not the same person or you know, for women, women, you guys can relate when you're around your man, you're different than when you're around your free, your female friends. And so um, what allowed me to step back into the modeling is I came to one with myself. Um, I've been in a public eye since 2000. And it's just like I had to find a way to embrace it, but not go backwards, you know, and so I was like, listen, Miss Lovely Black is a character that I created. She's a part of my story. She's a part of my journey. When people ask me about my name and where did I get it from? And I have to tell this long story. So it, it's just, you know, Miss Lovely Black is a part of me that, you know, I'm the new Miss Lovely Black and that's Miss Lovely Black. So I came up with the concept of a versus uh, photo shoot where I was in like, you know, business attire, standing mm -hmm. up. And then on the bed was Miss Lovely Black, you know, the sexy, the chocolate, the thick, the, uh, the give it to him. So, yeah. the, you know, corporate versus eye candy shoe. And so far, everyone loves it. You know what I liked about that is that you didn't put her in the black. Right. <laughs> like that, because I feel like people always have this thing about sexiness. That right. it's wrong. That that's the, you know, like taboo and it's not and I think we need to be accepting that like that's what I'm working on you know because I like sex I do and I like being sexy but for so long if you hear oh that's bad oh don't do that oh you look fast or oh this and that it gives you this shadow work that you have to work through way later because you're right. trying to cover that and be like but this is part of me Good. it's not Good. wrong 
you know? Right. So um, I was going to tell you when we talked last time and just in watching you, I was noticing how you were like, well, that's not me anymore. You know, I'm this person now. And I was like, but it's still you. And I'm glad that you came to that on your own and just were like, no, this is still me. It's just, I'm, I'm growing. You know what I'm saying? I'm allowed to do other things and still keep this part of my persona. So I really like that. And I commend you for that. Thank you very much. Um, you said something very important about shadow work. And for those that don't know what shadow work is, it's a very emotional roller coaster. And you go in yourself and you find the things that, you know, you were told, you know, no, you can't do this or no, you can't be this way. Or those feelings when you felt lonely and depressed and you felt left out, you go and you revisit those feelings and you heal those feelings and you grow to become the person that you, ha you are. Um, mm -hmm. A part of your spiritual journey, your spiritual journey is almost never over with and you're always growing and you're always learning. And I think in the last few months, I have grown so much spiritually. Um, I've started to put the right people around me, putting the people around me that I needed to hear from, that I needed to be like, that I needed to, you know, mirror um, positivity, you know, um, paying attention to what I share and what I post on my social media websites, because positivity, you want to, you want to bring light, you want to speak light, you want to look like, like, you know, like, like light, you want to, you want to bring out the positivity and not every moment in our life is a positive moment. But what we can do is live as positive as we can. How can we say we're going to indulge in the negative moments, but we're going to have faith? Faith is working through those dull moments with a smile on your face and still going, yes, yeah, okay to cry. Yes, yeah, so it's okay to sit down to yourself and have those moments. And I've had plenty in my time. Um, but because it's so taboo for us to be sexy, as you're saying, it's so taboo for us to, you know, put on a two piece. It's taboo for us to put on a one piece. But the one thing that I've been paying attention to, when you look at the Gabrielle Union, ultimate successful actress, when you look at the uh, Megan Goods, you know, successful actress married to a pastor, these mm. people are still allowed to be sexy. It's only those that listen to the negativity that says, oh, you can't be sexy or oh, a man doesn't want that. And you have toxic men that's screwing that information because any man, a manly man, he wants what someone else is want. He, he wants to have his woman here and another man want her, you know, that, that boosts right. his ego. But an insecure man, he doesn't want anyone looking at what he has because he's not complete himself. And he may feel that you can be taken from him. So we need to pay attention to what we take in and what we listen to as women because sexy is great and sexy sells. Sex sells. You know, no matter what it is that you're doing, get up, put some hair on your head or put some tracks in, put your eyelashes on, honey, put your lip gloss on and get something sexy. You don't have to walk around looking like a grandmother. You know, um, okay. it's, it's just <laughs> well, one thing. <laughs> It's this one thing, right? So, like, the Europeans always try to make everything make sense, right? Mm -hmm. So for them, it's like, they have to make everything make sense to take us further from our culture and for, from our truth. But in actuality, everything in life doesn't have an exact explanation. And if it has an explanation, it's probably not what you've learned. So yeah. in Earth years, you know, I'm 37 years old, but who's to say, you know, Chinese people, they have a whole nother way that they go about years. How does dogs age and age and seven year differences? You know what I'm saying? So keep in mind that make things make sense for you. Right. And, you know, that's all that matters is that it makes sense for you. A lot of people don't understand me, but either you're going to sit down and try or you're going to judge either way. I'm going to let you do whatever it is that you want to do. And I'm just going to be me. Right. And actually I just had that conversation with my son because um, he has been going to basketball training. Um, but sometimes his confidence is not that high in his game, but it's because of the comparison game and that competitive energy that comes out just in humans. And so I had to explain to him that he can't be comparing himself to somebody that is on a completely different path. 
Like what you're going to do is never going to be like this person. What this person is doing is never going to be like you. So you have to define for yourself who you are, you know, because mm-hmm. that's what you got to stand on. And you're the only right. person who knows that because just like you said, like, yeah, we're in our thirties, but like, we are not like, we are these higher spiritual beings who have like eons of experience. So if you listen to yourself, you already know what to do. You know what I mean? Right. So definitely. You know, as old as you feel. So right. you know what? When I get in front of that camera, I'm vibrant. I don't have an age on me. When I get in front of that camera, I am strong. I am fierce. I am sexy. I am the mogul. I have a story. I am going to tell it. All of that stuff goes out of the window. And I just focus on being who I am. Um, I belong in front of the camera. Um, whether it's sitting down, having a conversation, uh, whether it's filming, you know, uh, rather, you know, uh, interview, but, you know, I have my light to share with the world and I can't dim my own light. Sometimes we dim our own light. It's no one else dimming it for us. It's just us, you know, back in my religion days, I remember the pastor, uh, <laughs> he gave a sermon and he said, Stop lying on the liar. Meaning, we always saying, it's the devil. It's the devil. It's the devil. But sometimes you got to think about your role that you played in this. It ain't the devil. You need to do right. How you going to call the devil when you ain't doing right by yourself? So I still take that um, because in the biblical sense, there's some good stuff in the Bible. It's just twisted, you know, by the Europeans. But it's some really good stuff in the Bible that you can apply to your everyday life. Take accountability for who you are, what you do, and you would see a lot of things change in your life. Don't over put, you know, over overdo it and just depress yourself. But mm-hmm. understand, we play a role in everything that happens in our life. Right. Good or bad. Absolutely. And I think that's like the key point is like you're the creator of your life. So whatever you want to do you just do it. You can't worry about what the next person is going to say, because again, that's their experience. Like Mm -hmm. imagine if, like I was telling my son this because of the comparison thing. And he was looking at somebody's son, I guess LeBron James or somebody. And I'm like, first of all, back up, (laughs) you know, like that's a completely different thing. I said, what if every time I sat down to interview somebody, I said, well, that wasn't good because I didn't sound like Oprah, you know, like that's, it's never going to be so like, I know what my lane is and that's where I'm going. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm proud of you. I feel like even in the last time since we've talked, like, I feel like we both had some good growth and right. okay, so I have had a really emotional week. So this is what I was talking about in the video. So this mm-hmm. past full moon that we had Pluto squared up with it and brought like a lot of like emotional energy for us to kind of do some shadow work. And I just mm-hmm. have been all week like dealing with everything I said I was going to get rid of or work through at the new moon it's like everything just came back and was like surprise bitch you're not done you know so I kind of wanted to ask you a little bit about retrograde and how that made an effect on kind of what we experienced well I know I did I know some other people were emotional everybody was like man hating and stuff I'm like that must have been that heavy energy in actuality um We started this on the 11th of October and as of like the 29th, the 28th, uh, 27th, so to speak, it gets stronger. And the actual retrograde is on Mm the 31st. Yeah. Um, That's when it stations. Um, This retrograde goes. um, So we're in the pre-shadow phase is what Mm -hmm. I'm saying. And um, it actually hits on the 31st. And then we go into uh, the retrograde phase after that. This whole season of this retrograde here is going to last until December the 7th. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, that's like aftershock. So it's like a beginning before it hits. And then after there's also... Pre-shadow phase, the Mercury Mercury retrograde, and then you have the post-shadow phase. And so 
Okay, and this is combined with the new moon that we just had. And so this new moon was very, very amazing because it's set to get rid of uh, old habits. It's set to cleanse and, you know, it's going to bring in karma. So mm -hmm. understand this. You're going to hear people say how hard their life is right now. You're going to hear people going through so much. And unfortunately, you have to let these people um, go through what they're going through because it's the karmic cycle. So I think we briefly touched on this um, coming up to this the end of the year. Um, you will see more and more articles running on how more and more people are going into uh, what they call rich craft. Um, but, you know, it's knowing your power and your magic. And you have so many people whether you know it or not, that practice magic, especially if you're in a relationship, um, they're trying to break you up because they want them. Um, they're trying to, you know, cause problems with kids. And you would just be amazed at how sick and evil people are, women and men. But this is the time that you're going to start getting all of that karma back. It's so mm -hmm. amazing. And so 2020 is like such a great year because if you have been putting positivity out in the universe, that's what you're going to get back. If you have been uh, helping others and doing all of these things, that's what you're going to get back. And also anything that you have done that wasn't right, then, you know, you're going to also get that back. If you have been that negative Nancy and putting people, you know, putting spells on people and breaking people up, those people that you tried to break up, like the male counterpart of that, he's going to get wiser and he's going to officially walk away from you. Um, mm -hmm. Even if he's not with the other person, he's going to definitely walk away from you. You're not going to get that back. Um, and you're going to get all of the karma that you put in back. The retrograde uh, just automatically hits everyone and it t sends you into this frenzy, into this phase. But this one is more so emotional. Mm -hmm. And it talks about your emotional being um, and clearing your space about, you know, um, for everything it is that, you know, you have going on. Because this full moon was so awesome. Yeah. I felt I felt every part of it. I felt good. But then again, like I said about that emotional energy, like I can feel myself purging all those things because that's what I said I was going to do at New Moon. I said I was going to forgive and I was going to release and I was going to do this and I was going to be myself and I was going to do this and this and that. And then it was like, OK, it's time. And I'm like, oh, you know, because that's kind of what I was feeling is like, oh, it is time. I said I was going to do this, you know. Yeah, it's going to bring those things, those bad habits. It's going to release people out of your life um, that should not be there. People that you're holding on to um, this and learning a lot about sex magic and all types of things. But um, here's the thing. So. Till October the 28th, the waning full moon, it means 78 days till 2020, clearing toxicity out of your life. Today and the next 14 days, the moon has started a clearing and healing and transformation cycle. It means that all tox toxicity is being cleared from our lives, including current life drama and past life trauma clearing your baggage and healing from all hurts. Today also, a reminder that 2020 is 78 days away. The vibration of this number reminds us that we are connected to a divine source. All toxicity is being cleared so that we can attract great abundance in our lives, health, wealth, real love, harmony, and success. Through gratitude and generosity, we, act, we, uh, we can actively bring in the blessings of angel number 78. So 78, and this was on the 14th. It was 70 something, it was 70 something days um, on the 14th. So that full moon and the retrograde, you know, it's tough on everybody. So it brings everything to the light um, and it kind of makes you handle it and makes you deal with it. Um, there are certain things that you can do to make the retrograde a little bit lighter on you, but um, you would have to do your research at this point. Uh, to find out. Um, but for me, um, also, like the last day of this month is also witches, uh, the witch's new year. Mm. And um, this month itself is just so powerful. It's so much that you can actually do to grow. 
Uh, we were talking about shadow work earlier, and the true definition of shadow work is the process of exploring your inner darkness or your shadow self. Shadow work uncovers every part of what of you that has been disowned, repressed, and rejected. It is one of the major authentic parts of enlightenment. And that means that, you know, if you grew up and your family was saying you're not cute enough or you're not smart enough and so on and so forth, you know, those things, um, they, they actually bother us in our adult life. Um, those are the things that when we want to do something that we can, we'll sit back and say, well, I don't know if I should post this picture because I'm not cute enough. You know, um, I don't know if I should start this business because I'm not smart enough. You know, things mm -hmm. of that nature. That's the shadow work. When you tell, when you doubt yourself, that means that you need to do work for self to find out why it is that you're doubting yourself or someone does something that you want to do and you say, oh, they did it because it was easy for them to do. And I don't have the same opportunities. We all have the same opportunities. We all have the same amount of days in our life. Um, of course, we all need that that one takeoff, you know, that that one that one thing to catapult us to the next level. It's what you do once you get to that next level. It's what you do when you get into that limelight. Do you continuously work or do you get comfortable saying, OK, now I made it? Because when you get comfortable, that means that, you know, you're going to be kicked out of that space. That That's the 15 minutes of famous. Right. I've been in this since 2000. I've gotten out a couple of times, came back, reinvented myself and kept going. I know I have a higher purpose and that's to help people and that's to talk to people and mentor people and also share my beautiful gifts with the world. So you have to believe in you and believe in your magic. And when I say believe in your magic, the words that I'm speaking right now is my magic. The things that you say out of your mouth is your magic. It's you manifesting what the life that you want. So even if you're just talking, saying, one day I'm going to do this. Of course, you're manifesting because you're speaking it into the universe what you want. And I'll, along with some work to make that happen, it will come true. You can't just say, I want to get a five bedroom house one day and you're not doing anything to work towards getting that five bedroom house. It just shows that if you are doing the work and you are saving and you are moving in that direction for the five bedroom house, you'll get it. Right. And I'll say this about um, two things you said. <clears throat> First thing, okay, let me remember. I wanted to say something about manifesting and work. But I was going to say, you know, like you said, when you get to the limelight, well, if people don't start, they can't get there. And it's like, they're like in this, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be, but over here in the corner, which leads me to what you were saying about if you don't do the work. I mean, we hear all the time. Speak it into existence. Speak it into existence. Speak it into existence. Okay. You are leaving out the part that propels the words, which is the action that goes with it. And when people say, speaking into existence, I mean, I feel that. I hear what you're saying. But also share the how, which is get off your ass and figure out how to get to what it was that you laid out. You know what I mean? Right. But what was it that you really realized, oh, I did that? I knew from when I was a kid that I was different and I was special. I just didn't know why. I didn't know, you know, how. I didn't know any of those things. And so it would be like something as simple as me just having a conversation and I'll be like, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, I did it. And so, you know, people would be like, you said you was going to do that. You said it was going to happen. And, you know, people would acknowledge that because, you know, I've always been um, a, a, a people's person. So I'm talking and I'm like, hey, this is what we're going to do. And once I started realizing that the things that I was saying was actually coming to pass, I started speaking it more. And this is when I was about, about 20, 20 years old or something like that. Um, when I started realizing that everything that I was saying was actually happening, I was like, hmm, let me keep speaking this. And so I didn't understand anything about the words of manifestation. Of course, we grew up in the church. We were purified Christians. We didn't know anything about higher self, higher power, any of that stuff. We only knew what was taught to us. And 
uh, this, you know, happened for years. And I'd be like, all I have to do is speak it and work towards it. And I get it. Right. And I didn't understand that that was me having power. Um, I actually thought that that was normal, you know? And so when people, you know, would be like, I want to do this and then they never get it done. I'll be like, you're the reason you didn't get it done. You know, like (laughs) why? If I can speak it and then go and do it, then why can't everyone else? I didn't understand that that was a gift and that was a power that I had. And so um, my last, with with my relationship, uh, when, you know, my youngest son, he, his dad and, my, and, and myself, we were friends for years, right? And then when we finally decided to be in a relationship and he moved in, um, he was actually teaching, you know, and talking to me in reference to Aoife. And so he said, do your research. And I said, okay. And then I, t- I went on a, a journey, you know, before I even started really speaking publicly about, you know, the spiritual journey that I'm on to researching, to, you know, starting to step into my power and so on and so forth. And now I make it an everyday habit to just try to learn something different, um, to always, you know, do something more. Um, I, I have my daily rituals. Um, some people, they, their rituals is get up and drink coffee. And so mm-hmm. we feel like, oh God, they, they drink coffee. But in actuality, coffee is used very heavy in magic. And so that's, you know, their magic for some of the ones that do it. They just know they get up and they need to take on the day and they drink their coffee. And that's their particular magic that they use. I have my rituals when I get up in the morning that I do. I don't drink coffee, but I have my things that I do. And when you become more in tune with yourself, your higher self, right? You start to pay attention and you start to... um, you start to manifest more, you know, um, we can manifest the life that we want. It's no such thing as this person's holding me back or that person is holding me back. When you want to get somewhere, you have to work for it. And sometimes that means that you're going to work a regular job and you're going to hustle on the side. Sometimes that means that you're going to work 40 hours a week and get off and get on a plane to go work for the whole weekend and come back and you don't have any downtime. Sometimes that means that you're going to work two jobs and then still work your business. There's no shortcuts to this. And I'm so happy that more celebrities and people are speaking out and saying, this was not a shortcut. This was not easy. Um, I I said before, fame comes before money. You will become famous before you get the money. Um, When that opportunity comes for you to break, you will break and you will have the money. And it's very well deserved because you put in that work. But that overnight success thing, mm, no. Those are more so like the 15 minute of uh, 15 minutes of fame. Um, when you have the overnight success, you caught on, you get some money. You didn't manifest it really. It was just something that happened, you stumbled up on, you got a little attention, you got a little bit of money, and it's gone. But when this is something, this is your livelihood and something that you want to do, you want to definitely manifest, you want to speak it and, and whatever magic it is that you do on a consistent basis. And you want to always protect yourself. There are more people that know about magic than you can even think of. There are people that look at you and just automatically say, you know what, I want to make their life hard. Or I don't like the way she was talking to me. I'm going to put her in a jar or I'm going to put her or I'm going to do this. You have to keep yourself protected at all times. And therefore, no matter who sends anything to you, it may not be as easy to get it off of you um, as someone that's not um, that's not experienced. But when you have that realm of protection, even if you had someone strong sending something to you, your ancestors would just tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, we got somebody trying to do something. They still won't let it really affect your life, you know, and as, as they think that it should. So. Protection is very important with whatever you're doing. Continue to manifest, speak it, write it out with pencil. Um, lead is lead is natural. Um, so yeah, write it out and manifest it and manifest the life that you want to live. Yeah, I've been using the hashtag, hashtag manifest for the culture. I'm really just trying to see how many I can, because I'm, I'm just trying to create my own tag, you know. So there's only like seven on there now, but you know, I check it. I'm trying to see, I'm going to be like, who's trying to get on the train with old Mish? Who, who jumping on the train? But okay. So what you said about, um, 
how it long it takes to really find success. I mean, that's because you built that foundation while you were working, you know, and it's like that authenticity will take you. And if you don't make it about the money, it will come to you, you know, because if you make it about your craft or whatever it is that you're working towards, that passion that's there is going to help you build that solid foundation for when you get to the point, you know, Mm -hmm. when do you think you learned that? This time around, this time, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, um, everything was always like I, I've traveled. I've done a lot of traveling, but I didn't get to enjoy it because I was always working. I was always trying to make sure I had enough money. I was always trying to make sure I cleared enough money for the event to go back home because I've always had my own space and I've always been the one that had to pay pay the bills and get stuff popping. Right. And so I never really got to have fun. And this time around, I was like, you know what? I really want to enjoy this. And, you know, I want to travel with my kids sometime. And I, I don't want to make this all about work. And so when I did my radio show, I was like, I don't want this radio show to be about work. I had a couple, like three years ago, you know, I started saying, I want to do things that I love to do. And therefore, no matter if the money is coming in or not, I'll still do it because the passion is there. And mm -hmm. I tell you, everything that I have done, because I like to do it, I last very long at it. Um, my radio show, I wasn't, I wasn't getting any type of money when I first started doing my radio show. Well over a year, I wasn't getting any type of money. And then it was just re me getting the money back that I put in the show. Mm -hmm. Right? And so... I like doing it. So I kept doing it. And, you know, and, and now I have followers in 30 plus countries, mm -hmm. uh, people that listen to the show worldwide. So you have to do things that make you happy. Um, you have to do things that you can see yourself doing no matter what. And the consistency with that, it'll come. Who doesn't like taking selfies? Who doesn't like getting glammed up for pictures? Right. So modeling I felt was like the the best way to go about this um I have a passion for writing books I've been writing since I've been in the fifth grade um and reading poems to the whole class and everybody's like uh what does she know about love in the fifth grade <laughs> I, I was able to write about love in the fifth grade because I knew what I wanted to feel and I was and I wasn't feeling that so that's how I can write about these things you know um but yeah, you, you recently, I just said, you know what, everything that I do, I'm going to do because I want to do it because it's something I can see myself doing, not just because um, I want to make money off of it. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I did that, you know, things lasted, like um, I just celebrated two and a half years on the platform that I'm on for my radio show um, a couple of weeks ago, um, you know. My books, I started publishing books in 2017 um, and still going. So make sure something that you can see yourself doing and then you'll be happier and you will actually eventually make more money at doing it. Right, right. I think that's like sort of kind of like when you said you're going to do things that make you happy and not just things that you can make money off of it. Like that's how I had to start looking at clients. Because even though I only started this business in January, the consulting business, I had to stop looking at people like, oh, you're going to pay me because they all make bullshit. You know what I mean? So like I had to start looking at it like, is this work I really want to do? Mm -hmm. you know, is this really going to move me? So I was like, oh, can I make you a website? Absolutely. Do I want to? No. Am I going to? No. Can I tell you where you can get one? Yes. You know, because I that's just not what moves me. It takes too long. People don't be ready with their shit. I don't have time for it. I got two kids. I got this thing I got to do. I want to do things that I'm like, sure, let's talk. Or let's, you know what I mean? Like, I would just so much rather do things that I enjoy. So I think it's really important that you said that. And I'm, and I'm glad that you shared that with me, too. So I appreciate that. So are you still writing? Like you said, you're still writing. Um, what's your next book? I am still writing. Um, so far... My, my next few books is coming at the top of the year. Um, 
I just said, you know what? I was over 27, 2019, and I was like, I'm not releasing anything else. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I'm just going to get the hell out of 2019 and start over fresh in 2020. So um, I have one book that's on deck. I haven't put a name to it yet, but I have one that's on deck that is ready to come out, but I'm not releasing into 2020. You know, the, I did that too. Like in the last couple of weeks, I was like, I'm just not going to do no whole bunch of bullshit. So, like, I have one thing I'm really working on, which is, like, our Christmas party. <laughs> but I am going to have the other girls come back and do, like, a review, reading and show, like, a live show. So, like, that's the only thing I'm working to plan right now. And the rest of it, I schedule all the calls so I don't have to worry about that. Because I really just want to chill. There's nothing wrong with that. No, because that's the thing. It's like, you know, like when we talk about shadow work, that's what is coming for me. Go fucking sit down. Go sit down somewhere. Go rest. Because mm -hmm. when I'm not rested, I'm not myself. I don't feel that good. You know what I mean? Right. And I just have to start taking account of that and being like, ooh, I need to go chill. So I'm like, I'm just going to give myself some self-care. If it ain't something that I want to do, that's going to, first of all, be simple. I don't have to put much thought into it because what I do is like literal manifestation assistance. So it's like, oh, Michelle, I want to build this. So we're sitting down. I'm basically helping you pull it out of your head, put it on the paper, say what you want to do. Then we go do it. I'm, mm -hmm. That's a lot of work. I don't have enough energy for me you and your bullshit when you're not trying you know what i mean because i can't do it it's your vision so i really can't do it i can coach you into it and help you to get your project going but i can't do it for you and that's what i have to stop doing you know well a good thing to do in your resting phase and your resting bitch phase <laughs> to do your uh podcast yeah yeah, to, to really kind of... Well, but that's the thing. It's like, I'm going to be resting bitch all the time. So I'll just be super solo. Like, somebody told me I need to start vlogging. And I was like, oh, I'll think about it. I'm just trying not to do too much. That's going to be too much editing and have to be on a schedule. You know what I mean? Right. 100%. Yeah, because I just want to chill. Because it's like all this stuff was supposed to be so much fun. But because it has to be so regimented for it to be, quote unquote, like everyone the fuck else who podcasts, like I'll have people be like, oh, well, we want to do uh, advertising with you. But we noticed that you only post um, once every, like, you know, some stupid shit. I'm like, listen, lady, it's going to get out. You want it or not? Because, right. you know, I get that it needs to be scheduled, but I'm just not that person. Like, I can find a way to be more regimented. But I just want to relax until 2020 because that's when the shit's going to boom. You know, like right. I have to get myself ready. If you're relaxing and you're doing interviews, you're, you're, you're able to talk to people. You're able to, you know, let things out. So it's kind of like a therapy. This is something that you like to do because you like to talk. So yeah. why talking you're getting interviews in and you're locked and loaded for the rest of the year before you know it you have interviews for the rest of the year and you're ready to come in 2020 swanking and banging you know right. so it's doing right. something you love and not a lot of pressure and that's why i was like fuck it i'm not gonna try to focus on because really the thing was for me to help people is trying to help the black community trying to help people who have ideas but don't feel confident enough to execute them but mm -hmm. in this work i find it so hard because people are blocking themselves just like you were right. saying so even though i'm ready and willing and i'm standing in front of you with the paper the pencil everything that we need to do the work they're still going no because and i'm like you know what I love you guys, but I just can't do it. So I'm just taking a step back and I'm really looking at what else I can do just with my platform. Like on the creative page, whenever I had my enormous spiritual awakening, I was like, you know, instantly obsessed with the moon. Well, we know why. But, you know, in all this research, I'm like, 
well, maybe I should just start a little mood blog. Not a major one, but like just where I post each phase and whatever I'm feeling at the time. Because that would just be something for me to do while I'm figuring out how to help these people without killing myself in the process. The thing is about helping people is you can't help someone that's not ready to help themselves. Everyone is always ready. Everyone is always like, hey, let's do it. But they're really not ready. And the way that you determine if a person is ready is to buy the work that they have already done. It doesn't take long. I do artist management as well. We just picked up yeah, a new artist. About that. Maybe he thought it wasn't as business as it was, but, you know, like, you haven't done work. You haven't laid the foundation. So let's lay the foundation. Of course, you know, that takes time. So, you know, you have to understand that. Pay attention to what they put out there. Pay attention to all of their social medias, not just one. Pay attention to what type of history that they have. And if you're not working right now for yourself, there's no way that you're going to get with me and work. So why waste my time at doing and what I'm doing? Right. Because that's a lot, a lot of time, that's what they think. Oh, I'm going to slide over here with this person and they're going to push me. No, I'm not even. No, I'm not. So I wanted to ask you what your experience was like, because that's kind of what I'm running into with these people is like, they're wanting me to, you know, push them. So I wanted to ask you what your experience has been like in artist management running into people like that. If I can take that same attention that I'm going to give to you and put it on myself, then when you are absolutely ready, then we can take off and run with it. But most of the time, people aren't ready. And therefore, they can't do what it is that they need to do. I'm, oh. I'm investing in myself. I don't have time yeah. to invest in it's not ready to invest in itself. Absolutely. And you know, like, just like you said about these conversations being therapy, every time I talk to somebody, it's like right in line with whatever I'm kind of going through at the time or whatever I'm feeling, because that's what the, the whole goal of this show is. Because like when we first talked, I was still kind of in this hazy space where I was like, what the fuck am I even doing? And then I was like, oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm getting the steps together. And I'm also helping people who are listening. So it's like every week I'm like, yes, that's it. That's it. And I just really appreciate you sharing all that with me. So I'll be dropping the rest of this episode later this week and you will hear the end of our discussion. I hope you like the first part of the new Miss Lovely Black Returns Embracing Your Shadow. All right. See you guys later. Bye.